Hi, everybody. This is Pam Coley. Um, I'm in my studio and I am going to be discussing uh, struggles with Tim O'Neill, who, as you know, he's one of our pro team admin. Uh, he's an art historian. He's got a huge background, 40 years in art, and uh, he's an amazing artist. And, and I will show you some of his artwork. So hello, Tim. Hi, Pam. Thank you for chatting with me today. Yeah, you got a million projects going on, which uh, that's that's really cool. And for all of you out there, he's uh, enrolled in a year-long Milan course. And so we are going to be discussing, uh, Tim, your your challenges. And for somebody who's been painting for so long, um, I, I always find it like really um, good to talk with artists who've had success and like our struggles never go away. Do you agree? Right. Yeah. They're, they're part of the process. They really are. Okay. Well, I'd love to hear about your process and how like things have changed over time, you know, over your 40 year period, um, the struggles that you told me about, which um, you submitted when all of our founding members kind of submitted their top three struggles, you wrote uh, choosing one medium so that you can go deeper into one and fight this jack of all medium sort of master of none syndrome. Uh, is this something that you feel is like come to a point now over your 40 year history or is it more recent? No, I, I think it's been all along um, for me. You know, I started I started as a photographer, um, but I, I drew and painted a lot still, even though I was making my living as a photographer. Um, it was just one medium and I'm, I'm a lifelong learner. I love to learn. Uh, you and I are, are much the same in that way. Um, and so I get a lot of enjoyment from learning, but the challenge is then I feel that I don't go deep enough into um, some areas to, to really, to never get uh, mastery, if you will, of those areas. And so um, I think it's something that's kind of at least uh, felt like it's plagued me all along. Um, even though I've spent a lot of years in several different mediums, I still don't feel like um, there's any one particular medium that I have mastered or even come close to. So what are the mediums overall? Like what would be the top three mediums that you work in? Um, for sure, digital, even though it's probably been five or six years since I've done much digital. Um, but from there, it, it would be um, acrylic, well, mixed media, acrylic, um, oil, and then recently, as a year ago, um, with your course, I added um, cold wax, and that's been actually pretty fun, a lot of fun, and well, pretty exciting. Let's take a look at your work. Um, for somebody who says that you're <laughs> jack of all mediums and master of none, um, when I first saw your work, I mean, I was pretty blown away and felt like you certainly had a handle on this one. So uh, is this an oil or an acrylic? Um, this is mixed media, so it's pigment and oil. Okay. Um, yep, and so it's uh, what I I'm, I'm able to get results that I enjoy. The process for me is um, kind of been what the challenge has been. I have a, a really good process that I can get results that I like, but I it, it involves so much digital, um, and I I don't like sitting in front of the computer. I do like the smell of the studio. I like the tactile qualities of paint going on canvas or on board. Um, I, you know, I like the sound, the brush and all my tools make on the, the board, whether it's a cradle board or solid board or canvas. I love all of that um, a lot. I mean, that is, that's really what I enjoy the most. And so I want more of that and less, um, less digital, less in the computer. Um, and I'm, I'm making progress towards that. I, you know, I haven't been digital for five or six years now. Um, and, and that was the whole goal was to kind of, all right, let's get back to basics. Let's get back to um, a drawing instead of um, allowing myself to use a photograph to, as a reference and, you know, with Photoshop or with painter, you, you can whip out a likeness in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't believe, you know, some people say, oh, that's cheating. No, it's not, whatever. It, yeah. It's, it's not cheating. It's just a different way of working. It's a different skill set, right. but, um, it, 
for me, it takes away some of what I really, really love about creating fine art. So I've, I've been looking for that balance. Um, and that's kind of I'm more and more um, traditional media and less and less digital now. Okay, I mean, and looking at these two, and let's show a couple more images here. Um, obviously, you're combining realism with abstraction. And, and you being the art historian, uh, um, you would have a way better ability to place yourself in, in this realm of art history. I mean, we're in postmodernism, right? Post, post, yeah. postmodernism or whatever. And um, I mean, I think most people would look at, at this body of work and say that, you know, you, in some way you have mastered at least what you're doing here and whether that re, that includes a bit of digital and then, you know, your mixed media, whatever you're doing, it's working and working really well. Um, or do you not feel that these, I mean, wouldn't you just say that you have mastered this process pretty much? Um, I, I think, yes, for this process, um, I, I, I'm very comfortable. I've taught it for a lot of years. Um, I'm, I'm one of, I, I don't even know what they call it now, but Corel Painter has um, elite master, yada, yada. I don't even know what it is, but it's, it's, there's a group of us that started with Corel Painter way back before it was even Corel Painter. Um, I think there's, there's eight or 10 of us. And um, we've stuck with that and grew with, with the software as it grew. So I am very comfortable um, with Corel Painter and um, Photoshop as well. Started with Photoshop one way back in the day. Wow. So um, on the digital side of things, I, I feel that um, I can pretty much create anything that I can think of. Um, the challenge is for me, again, bringing that back out with traditional media and um, combining the two and going more and more towards abstraction and less and less realism um, is, is what my goal has been and, and trying to find a process that works for that. I do like figurative work. I love portraits. Um, I like um, landscapes and wildlife, but I, I, I'm not a big fan of realism. I do appreciate those that have that gift that they can right. um, draw and paint realistically or hyper-realistically. I do not have that, but I can take an incredible photograph. So for me, it's kind of like, why do I want to, you know, I don't want to learn and take the time to do that when I can do it um, effectively with what I already know with photography. So how do I get, you know, how do I deconstruct things and become more and more abstract um, is, is kind of what the challenge has been. And do you think, okay, so that's really interesting because you're, you're talking about moving into a whole new genre. You're going from figurative yeah. and, and semi-realism, semi-abstraction to, are you talking about total non-objective art? Like no figures or? I think, no, I think still objective um, or, or abstract as, as opposed to non-objective, but um, I, I, I love non-objective art. I just uh, am not very good at it yet. Uh, and, and I haven't figured any of that out. So that requires a lot more experimentation um, in play for sure. But I also find myself always drawn back to um, wanting to start from something I see or something I have seen, mm -hmm. uh, which would then, you know, it's, it's not, uh, not objective if you do right. it that way. So um, yes, it is a launching point and then you diverge so far from it. Um, as I've talked with other artists, like they have a plan, but then by the time they finish their work, it's like, it looks nothing like where they started, you know? Right. Right. And I think, I mean, I think that's fine too. I, you know, there's, there's something to be said for, um, you know, auto painting and just, just play um, for sure. But um, I tend to approach things with, okay, I love this picture of a wolf I've taken what can I do with it or I love this portrait of my wife or my daughter or somebody that you know what can I do with that right. and so then it becomes more abstract and less non-objective yeah yeah I see that well you know it, it just makes sense that as an experienced artist we're always pushing the boundaries and looking for something a little bit of a tweak in how we work um, just to keep ourselves excited about the whole process you know that's that's a large part of it isn't it just um feeling like we're breaking into new territory and not, not falling into the trap of a formula, which I, you know, nobody feels yeah. too comfortable with or too good about that, I guess. And, um, and then, you know, you mentioned other challenges like time. Um, I think time is something we all struggle with, but 
um, you, you might want to talk about some of the things that like some of your dreams and, you know, like if, if you had your choice, what would you want to be spending all of your time with or devoting most of your time with versus how it is right now? And then how do you, how do you meet that challenge that you have with time? Okay. So <clears throat> two part question. The, the first part would be um, if I could do anything that I wanted to do all day long, right. um, I, I love being in the studio. If I could get away with just creating, and I guess that doesn't necessarily mean just painting, but as we talked about before, I do a lot of um, different mediums and, and I love the industrial arts and building things. And so if I could just be a builder, maker, painter, creator all day, every day, that would be awesome. Right. Um, and in trying to put together a business to where that can happen is um, part of, part of the, um, not only the challenge, I think, but it's part of what feeds me and allows me to continue, um, you know, doing the day to day things that you don't necessarily love to do, but that you have to do to, to make ends meet. And everybody's in that situation, whether you're a business owner or not. Um, and then, so the second part of the question would have been, well, um, oh, how I overcome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I is, is, right brained as I am, um, I still have quite a bit of left brain going on. And so I'm big on um, setting up my, my day, getting up early, um, going through, I guess it would be a sort of process. I'm, I'm, I love to do morning pages. Um, I've been very consistent with those. That helps me get right brained. It helps me set the stage for the day. Mm -hmm. And when I get done with that, then I literally go and I, I make a I'm old school. I make a list. What do I want to accomplish today? Yeah. Um, and I check that list off as I go. And some days you get one thing done yeah. or maybe none. Yeah. Um, and so the list carries over, but it's okay. At least I have direction. And I, I found that, uh, you know, just recently in the last couple of weeks, I had severe challenges getting in the studio. And when I kind of unpacked that a little bit, um, that's one of the things that was missing was I wasn't doing my normal daily routine, my list. I'd gotten kind of out of whack with that and just, Hey, it's free time. I could do anything I want. Um, <laughs> you know, not being in school as a teacher. Um, that's dangerous for me anyway. Um, because I, I didn't have any direction. I wasn't moving towards the goals that I had preset. Um, I was getting things done, but they weren't the right things. Um, that's right. Yeah. Talk about, you know, your basically your day job, but it's, it's, it's not the entire year round, right? It's like right. nine months out of 12. And what is it you teach? Yep. I'm an art teacher and a coach. Um, so I teach seven through 12 art and, um, it is an absolute blast. I do love it. Um, it's, uh, as I get older though, the energy, that it takes to do that is uh, I, it takes a lot more energy than I, I have. And so I know that, you know, sooner or later um, I need to be able to be prepared to walk away from there and, and have something in place that I can um, really enjoy and, and move ahead with those other goals. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I mean, it sounds like you, you know, don't forget your list, Tim, <laughs> you need your list. I need the list. Yeah, don't we all? I mean, and I, I feel like, you know, as advanced as we get technologically, um, you know, we can keep our notes on our computer, I still revert to these post-its. My post-its have post-its, and they're all like taped together until they get to be like three feet long. <laughs> um, so talk about your other, your last challenge was personal voice. And you wrote, I've never bought into each piece of art I create having a deep meaning or making a specific statement. I don't know that I have anything specific to say. I just wanna create many times just for something pleasing aesthetically. Having said all of that, I would like to develop a signature style. Um, and it's hard to like just have seen your work and feel like you, at least for that period in your life that that was not a signature style. I, I think people would recognize that as you. Um, so you wanna talk a little bit about that and why you maybe don't feel that that was part of your personal voice? Yeah, I think um, um, because there's no depth, if that makes sense. There, 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 
a lot of them, uh, my polar paintings are fairly shallow. I mean, <laughs> in terms of, uh, I guess, in terms of emotional content, emotional draw. And so um, I've never been really one of those artists that has a really deep message that I would like to get across. Um, you know, having said that, there are a lot of images that I um, that I connected with when I either drew it or when I photographed the reference. Um, it was a special moment or something like that. Those are a little bit different. If I could do that all the time, then maybe um, I feel like a personal voice would start to come through. But um, I don't know, I guess just being, you know, the whole concept of the art canon set that's out there to where, you know, it, it, you can look at a work that may or may not have any um, fossil or any skill set that shows, some of them don't show. <laughs> um, I, and I, I still think that there's probably meaning behind this, but I've never bought into, oh, this, whatever, this banana on the wall means da 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 da. Okay. <laughs> I am not, I totally don't buy into that. Um, it's like, no, you need to, you need to show um, some creativity somewhere and some skill set somewhere that took um, some, something to develop. It just didn't happen that, um, you know, because literally if, if you look at a lot of the abstract art um, and I've heard it a million times, I've even been guilty of saying, you know, my kindergartner could do that. Um, uh -oh. With abstract art, that is not necessarily, that is not true. Um, a banana on the wall with duct tape, that is true. Um, it, you know, but with abstract art, it, it, th that is, it may look like that. And I think that's a gift being able to make it look like that and still work. Yeah. Um, that is a tremendous amount of skill um, it, that it takes to create abstract art that will hold you and talk to you. Um, that is way more difficult in my opinion than realism yeah. way more difficult um yeah. and, it, and I, I think people don't realize that but then to further have a message come through in an abstract especially a non-objective piece is is almost miraculous i mean how does that happen yeah you know so i think it's something to strive for um all at the same time having a recognizable style you know, it yeah. seems like a monumental task to me, um, especially when you're talking um, abstract and, and not objective, for sure. True. Yeah, it's true. There are many, many levels of, you know, personal voice and all the different ways that you can kind of inject part of yourself and your life and your experiences. And, and then there's you know, how long you've been an artist. And, and at so many different times, you know, we, we all question ourselves whether could we be saying more, you know, that, that reaches the viewer? Um, yeah, it's, it's a very complex thing, but uh, well, I want to really thank you for sharing, you know, your struggle, struggles, your personal struggles with us. And, um, you know, it's always good to talk with artists who have a lot of experience like yourself and find out that, you know, it's, we're kind of all in the same boat, no matter how far along we are. Uh, and I, I just find that to be kind of comforting because, um, you know, I, I just, in some ways, I feel like it's the struggle that makes our art really authentic and always challenging. And if those struggles were to go away, I don't know if it would be as um, enjoyable, which is kind of a strange thing. You know, yeah. you kind of need that struggle, right? To, yeah. Um, yeah. So, well, thank you so much for your time, Tim, and we'll be doing more chats for sure. And thank you for sharing this with the pro group. And uh, um, I, I so appreciate you as being one of our admin and providing our, the art bites, which um, people will get to see pretty soon. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.